My name is Mark Harrison. I'm a professor of economics at the University of Warwick in England, and I'm also a research fellow at Hoover. I've been doing quite a bit of work over the last couple of years in the archive of the Lithuania KGB, which is held here. And I find it particularly fascinating because it has a lot of material from the 70s when I was a student in Moscow. And so it answers a lot of the questions that we all used to have. Are they interested in us? Do they have files on us? Do they follow us? Do they mind what jokes we tell? Do they know who we meet up with? And the answer to all of these questions I now know is yes. Uh, but my scholarly interest in these files is uh, to do with secrecy. I'm interested in the system of secrecy and what it did for them in terms of their system of rule. A particular aspect that I've been working on is how much it costs to run a government that is based on such a secretive uh, and controlling system of information. We look at the functioning of Western democracies today and we see that Western democracies are not putting on a particularly good show. Uh, they have a lot of problems in reaching decisions and, uh, that involve consultation and disagreement and deadlock over matters as diverse as uh, fiscal deficits, entitlements, uh, environmental controls. It seems as if uh, autocracies have an advantage. They can make decisions quickly and cheaply without bothering about due process. What the files of the Lithuania KGB show is that dictatorships too have their problems. In particular, the problem of handling a vast quantity of secret paperwork and of conserving their secrets while denying the public access to any information about the decisions that are being made. Uh, in these files we see that uh, there was a system of accounting for paperwork. Uh, we understand naturally that governments account for money, they account for people, uh, but when you have a system of complex secret administration you also have to account for paperwork because you have to know where every piece of paper is at all times and who holds it. And a surprisingly large proportion of the archive documentation consists of accounting for paperwork. It's paperwork that tracks pieces of paper. And uh, if one of the things that I've done is to count from 1954 to 1982, I think of this as the period of post-war Soviet normality. Over this period, more than one-third of the archive paperwork of the Lithuania KGB consists of this accounting system. What it suggests is that the typical KGB office worker was spending one-third of his or her time doing nothing but tracking paperwork. The only thing that seems to have mattered more to the KGB was armed threats to the Soviet state. Their first priority was to prevent the armed overthrow of the Soviet state. Their second priority was to track their own secrets. Everything else, the persecution of dissidents, uh, monitoring young people, uh, preventing people from fleeing abroad, uh, opening the mail, listening to telephones, everything else came afterwards. So can you talk a little bit about the files that you found monitoring foreign students in Moscow? Well, uh, so th these files are based on Lithuania, mm -hmm. and so they show that the, the people visiting Lithuania, students and, and others, and what they show is that the KGB carefully tracked uh, all visiting delegations and as many visitors as they could keep tabs on. Uh, one of the things that always interested me was uh, I have a name which uh, can be translated into Russian in different ways. It can begin with a K or with a G. And therefore I always wondered if they had two files on me. Did they, did they marry up the different versions of my name? Did they reckon with the fact that I have a nickname which isn't either of my given names? Uh, having looked at these files, I know the answer is yes. They had systems for everything. They had systems for phonetic uh, naming of people. Of course, when they invaded Lithuania in 1940, they invaded a country that used the Roman alphabet. So they had to quickly develop a system for understanding Lithuanian names and uh, cataloguing them. And uh, it seems to have been a system that worked pretty well. Uh, they tracked people in, they tracked people out. When they sent people abroad, they sent their own people with them. Uh, Soviet tourists always had a KGB officer and maybe one or two informers with the group. 
uh, and uh, who then had to report back uh, on, on their return to the motherland. Uh, so they, they, they had a system that was based upon mass surveillance. Uh, they gathered information, they couldn't gather enough information. The thing that bothered them all the time was uh, the fact that th there were some people they knew about, but what about the people they didn't know about? What were they up to? Particularly young people, because you have the old people in the card catalogue. You know what the old people were doing. What about the young people? What are they doing? What are they thinking? The young people are our future. They're the people who are going to grow up and be the leaders of Soviet Lithuania in the future. We have to ensure they're loyal, that they're reliable, that they understand how things should be done. And so they were constantly bothered about what are people thinking and doing who are not in our card catalogue. Uh, 